Hi, uh, good afternoon. Uh, let's see how many people have joined us. Uh, we give them a few more minutes. Can uh, I think everybody can hear me clearly? Okay, without further ado, let me introduce today's speaker, uh, Dr. Siti Moyasara, a plastic and reconstructive surgeon. She is a sessional doctor at KPJ Kajang Specialist Hospital. Today, she is here to share with us uh, about breast uh, reduction. Now, before we go into the topic and introduce uh, Dr. Moya Sara, I would like to just give you a brief break, uh, breakdown on her credentials. She started her practice as a plastic and reconstructive surgeon at Pusat Perubatan University Kebangsaan, Malaysia. And as a fellow in plastic constructive surgery and microsurgery from Austria. Her course of practice also includes breast and body contouring, reconstructive surgery, and other aesthetic procedures. She has fellowship in aesthetic surgery from Spain, breast plastic and reconstructive uh, surgery from Belgium, international fellowship in plastic and reconstructive surgery and microsurgery, Austria. Okay, without, a, without further ado, let me introduce to you our Dr. Moya Sara. Hi, Doctor. Hi, Nidia. How are you? Hi. I'm good. I'm good. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. Thank you for arranging this. No worries. Uh, okay, without further ado, Doctor, we shall start our session now as people are joining us. Uh, we have about 13 people who are watching us right now at this session. Um, do you want to say hi to them? Yeah, I just say hi to them. <laughs> Welcome. Okay. <laughs> All right, then. Uh, I will be here and you can start your session now, Doctor. Okay. So, Lydia, how is, uh, is it? how is this going to be? Are you going to um, talk with me or I'm just going to present it on my own? I can hear you. Sorry, I muted myself. <laughs> okay, how this is going to go is um, you introduce your topic and uh, share your about breast reduc reduction with our audience today. And in between, if audience have any question, they can drop us uh, um, in our chat. And we will ask that question during our fifth, after 15 minutes of break, or if you want to stop and ask questions at that point of time. And then I will also have some Q&A questions for you much later after the session. All right. Mm. Okay. okay. Thank you, so, Doctor. It's yours uh, now. So, hi everyone. Um, I'm Dr. Steve Mesa Rusli, as Lida introduced me just now. Today, we're going to talk about breast reduction. Basically, just a brief um, overview about um, this treatment and procedures and what actually, um, I mean, who actually needs it. Um, so, let's go to the overview first. So, what is breast reduction? Can we go back to the previous slide, Lida? Okay, so what is breast reduction? Well, in, in short, it's about reducing the size of an oversized breast. Okay, next video. So as I mentioned here, the medical term of uh, breast reduction, we also call it as reduction mammoplasty, whereby uh, the main component is to uh, remove the excess breast tissue, fat and skin. And then after we have removed all the breast tissue, I mean, not all, part of the breast tissue, we will shape the breast uh, into a, 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 a more appropriate size and contour. So this kind of procedure is to address an associated physical, psychological, and also a cosmetic limitation of a, a woman. So next, video. So how is the breast reduction procedure? Um, and this procedure is basically uh, 
done under general anesthesia and it must be done under a hospital setting in a operation theater and the main incision techniques that are being used in this uh, procedure is either a keyhole, a lollipop, an anchor, whereby I will explain more about it later on. And the base of the breast that we preserve can be either superior, medial, inferior, lateral, or in combination. So, uh, like I said just now, if we remove the excess breast tissue together with this fat and also part of the skin and then we uh, in certain case we need to reposition the nipple and the areola complex and then we close it in layers and put an approach appropriate dressing and also a supportive specific kind of bra okay next video so the people always ask why I mean, who needs to seek plastic surgery consultation when it comes to breast reduction? I would like to um, divide the reasons into three categories, which is the physical reasons, um, psychological reason, and also cosmetic reason. And for the physical discomfort, uh, the patient always complain of neck, shoulder, and back pain. And sometimes it is accompanied with skin, rashes, and also fungal infection underneath the breast. It is due because it is due to uh, frictions and also moisture. And also sometimes they complain of um, bra, strap, bra strap marks and also pain. And there are a few of them that complains of um, difficulty of breathing because of the burden and also an exercise limitation, especially in heavy and dynamic exercises such as jogging or running. And of course, because this comes with, um, uh, what do you call it? This comes with a cosmetic outlook, and this is always associated with a psychological reason whereby uh, the woman might you know, feel self-conscious and due to comments, inappropriate comments, and also public staring. And because of the size, uh, which is mostly abnormal, um, the woman might have some difficulties in finding bra sizes, and this is quite costly, and some of them might have to order a customized bra size, and definitely it will uh, cause difficulties in fitting clothes. Next video, and what are the age limitation? Basically, there's no specific age requirement. It's all based on symptoms, um, and mostly, of course, it's recommended for someone to undergo this kind of treatment uh, when they have reached um, puberty, I mean, maturity. But in certain cases, even in teenagers, whereby it is causing severe physical and psychological distress uh, due to excessively large breasts, they can get treatment too. And of course, um, in overall, like any other kind of surgery, uh, the, individual, the individual needs to be um, overall in good health and um, not in a high risk uh, type of candidate. Next, Lydia. So, what are the benefits of breast reduction? Obviously, we can improve the pain that is causing uh, the individual. Uh, we can improve the posture. We can provide relief um, to the breast strap problem. And also, there's um, better in fitting clothes. And after removal of the uh, excessively large breast, uh, the person will likely have more comfortable activities and the skin problem will be reduced and of course um, last but not least the self-confidence um, will be improved and this will improve not only um, physical health but also mental health as well so like i um, touched a little bit just now what are the techniques of uh, breast reductions when we say about techniques, um, 
we can categorize it into the skip incision or um, um, pedicle uh, type. So what I'm talk uh, what I'm going to talk about today is is on skin incision because this is um, what people are more concerned of because it, this it will affect the scarring and also the shape. So there are three most common incision. Uh, this is anchor, also called wise pattern type, uh, lollipop, also called vertical type, uh, donut or keyhole, which is a peri areola type. Next slide. So what is the general process of someone who opts to go um, for a breast reduction? So basically, obviously, it needs to start with a full medical consultation and assessment, um, whether the person is uh, in good health and, in, and also to analyze the risks and everything. And most importantly, um, the person needs to be uh, explained in terms of the procedure, the concerns, and also discuss the goal and expectation um, with the plastic surgeon. So, um, not yet, yeah. So, uh, before, before someone undergoes that procedure, sometimes they may need um, certain kind of imaging and also needs um, a breast measurement, a preoperative measurement. Uh, definitely needs to be done um, a few days before the operation. Um, and for the measurements uh, of the breast, it needs to be done one day before the operation because that is what, uh, what we call it a pre-operative surgical marking. And then, uh, of course, the surgical planning um, will be done according to uh, the goal and the size that is um, desired. And also, the surgery will be done under general anesthesia, under hospital and in a hospital or a surgical center. And then during the consultation and also after the operation, the patient will be reminded of the post-operative care, including the wound care and how to manage the pain and the supportive garments that must be worn at least two months and also the follow-ups accordingly. And we have to remember that the recovery is different for everyone but there are some, well, standard um, surgical post-operative advice that needs to be adhered. Next, Lilian. So, yeah. So, the recoveries. Uh, like I said just now, it is different between one individual to another. But in standard, the wound healing uh, will take about two weeks and the Patient will be advised for only uh, for only light activities for two to six weeks, and uh, only after six weeks to eight weeks, um, she will be allowed for normal activities, especially for exercises. But you know, it's important to note that the final results of the breast reduction and how it looks will take several months, if not up to a year. And of course, during this period, especially for the first six weeks. For the first two months, um, wound care, the wearing of the compression garment, which is the supportive bra, and avoidance of strenuous activities must be adhered. So, um, I was expecting for you to ask me, <laughs> Nidia. Yeah, I do. I do have a lot of questions to ask you. Okay. Um, when, when to seek? Yeah. For plastic. Sorry, can you hear me? Hello. No. Hi, can you hear me? You hear at all? What about now? No. Sorry, there, but we can't hear you. I think you're on mute. Yeah, I'm muted. No. You can hear me now. Yeah, I can. Okay. Um. My question is when to seek for plastic surgery consultant if you and when do you know a patient needs to go through it you know some people i've seen they are very comfortable with their large breasts and uh, 
they don't do anything about it. I do have a friend, sister, who actually says that with the weight of her breast is very heavy, that she can't walk and she has back pain and all that. Um, when do they know that it's actually not normal or it's time for them to get this surgery? All right. So like I mentioned just now, the symptoms, when you have the symptoms that is causing you unnecessary uh, pain, and physical um, limitation, physical activities limitation, it might be a good idea to seek uh, consultation and advice. And if it's indicated, then breast reduction might be an option for you. Well, you have to understand that this is purely an elective procedure. And you can opt not to have it if you're comfortable with your breast size and it's not causing you any, you know, um, physical activities, limitations, it's not causing you any pain, it's just the size and you're okay with it, it's totally fine. This is not about, um, you know, not being grateful of what you have. It's mm-hmm. about, yeah. Um, yeah, it's about the quality of life in general. Correct. And a lot of people do fear about uh, judging, you know, fear of judgment. Now, yeah. because we are on that topic, can we talk about misconception around plastic surgery in general so when we say plastic surgery it's always about uh, you know doing botox and all that but i'm sure there are also a lot of medical related surgeries right um, yeah. this can be yeah. consider best re- uh, sorry definitely yeah can we can we consider breast reduction as an aesthetic uh, procedure or it is a medical procedure uh-huh. Okay, this is like a, quite a gray area because it really depends on whether it's causing a, a functional limitation. Okay, let me explain a little bit about plastic surgery. Um, plastic surgery composed of reconstructive and cosmetic. And cosmetic is actually just a little part of plastic surgery. So the difference is in plastic surgery in terms of reconstructive, um, we deal with we, we deal with um, altering something which is abnormal to normal or something which is, you know, it looks normal but it's causing um, functionally not so normal or causing, you know, in, a, in terms of function-wise, it's not normal. And we're trying to um, alter it to improve the function. I would like to say that in breast reduction, it can be either one or it can be both because... Mm-hmm. In terms of if patient do not have any um, discomfort, it's just merely the size and it's just not comfortable with the size, it's not causing any, um, uh, like, you know, the symptoms that I mentioned just now. And yeah. that is cosmetic. But when it's causing, uh, when it's causing the symptoms that I mentioned just now, the physical, psychological and also um, cosmetic reason, and it's it's very obvious that it's, this is like you know affecting the quality of life. Then it is a to me my opinion it is a reconstructive, but with the addition of cosmetic. Yes, yeah. Understood. So plastic surgery, everything has an element of cosmetic. It's just that um, in certain cosmetic cases, there's no there's no really a, a functional benefit to it, but rather a more enhancement. And that is a pure cosmetic. Yeah. Okay, thank you so much, Doctor. And one more question I have is, um, for real case scenarios, a lot of people feel like, you know, like you mentioned just now, they sh- it's nothing to do with you should accept yourself for who you are. And uh, they and a lot of people are f- afraid or think that they will be, you know, what people say, I must be happy, you know. That there's a thing where um, large breast is beautiful so i shouldn't be complaining about it but they suffer self uh, suffer mentally within themselves because they feel uncomfortable and everything have you ever encountered patient who actually go through a lot of mental health uh very disturbed mentally because of their large breasts well actually most of the i mean most of the uh, patients who who seek for breast reduction um, almost all will have to undergo this kind of a stigma whereby um, they are being discouraged 
to mm. seek judgment because of what you said just now. They are mm. being asked to be grateful and mm. they're being prepared to other people who um, try to uh, have a breast enlargement procedure since they and uh, they are trying to compare them with those um, people. So this is, um, to me, it's quite unhealthy. Um, and to change the misconception takes a lot of education and awareness. Um, and I think it, it really boils down to the individual to think what's best for her rather than think about what other people think what's best for her. When it comes to health, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Correct. Because a lot of people, um, I shouldn't say like that, but there is um, an, a misunderstanding about breast reduction uh, has direct impact on health. And some say it doesn't have, it's actually a, a conversation that happened in our office itself. So one is related to health, it directly impacts your health. Another one says, no, it doesn't impact health. Does it really impact our overall health? If in terms, in the cases where it's an overly sized breast and it's causing not only disharmony, but it's also causing the symptoms that I mentioned just now, the posture, the back pain, it is directly impacting the health. And um, they can also seek, uh, like for example, a spinal orthopedic surgeon to um, co-manage their back pain as well. But, mm. you know, we need to understand that if the etiology of the back pain is overly sized breast, then logically, I mean, you can even think that you need to treat the cause that's causing the back pain. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, very true. Because um, it does give an impact, right? When you do work, when you have to walk. And many women who are actually struggling from it would be able to relate to this. Uh, one more question I have. Is there any specific age for an individual to undergo the procedure? Um, there's no specific age, but of course, it's you, um, the best is for you to wait until your breast has, you know, matured, until you have reached a full puberty, and and the development of the breast is at the at, at the most mature. But in some cases, in teenagers who are having this overly large size breast, and that's causing those symptoms, they can get treatment. They are treatment for that. And age in terms of, well, if it's an older patient, obviously you need to weigh the, uh, the underlying medical illness that comes with it because you have to understand that um, this is elective surgery and mm -hmm. not just about uh, having a good size and harmony um, body proportion, but also you need to also consider other health, mm. health risks. I understand. Okay, uh, doctor, we also have a question from our uh, chat. They asked about the cost of operation. The cost of operation, it really varies. You have to go, um, you have to discuss with the doctors. It needs to be um, um, done not only in the hospital, I mean, sorry, it needs only, you, you need to consider not only the hospital, but you also need to consider the individual size, which is, which varies one, you know, from one person to another. So the cost varies. And, you know, if you go to private, the cost is different. If you go to the government, the cost is different. And, um, you can't really know how much the cost truly is until you have make a, um, you know, a consultation with your doctor and you will most likely get a um, more accurate estimation during your consultation. Okay. So going back to um, the, the, the age that we were talking about and you mentioned and we all, we when you're in girls' school and you've met uh, teenagers with large breasts and they've always been shy, especially they are in mixed school, right? And 
some of them may not know that this thing is an option. We do have breast reduction. It's not just about breast enlargement, correct? So now, what advice would you give to the parents of those uh, students if the child wants to do uh, this surgery? Okay, first, you need to understand that, you know, teenagers sometimes, um, we need to be certain that it is truly a condition that is affecting their physical and mental health. Okay. And it's not just based on, you know, um, what my yeah. friends say, kind of thing, you know. So, like I said just now, the only way for you to uh, be certain and for you to make that decision is by seeing the right person, mm -hmm. which is a surgeon, the surgeon. So, and even so, after you have seen a surgeon, you usually will have a time period, we call it a pull-off period, for you to think, you know, wisely, whether you want to go through the procedure. And, yeah, and, and you know, after that cool-down, cool-off period, then you will get a clearer picture and a clearer decision. Right. Thank and you. It's definitely not a, you know impulsive decision. It's not like um, I come back from school and my friend said this and that and I want to do this. It's definitely not like that. <laughs> so it's advisable for parents to sit and speak to them through it. And today our yeah. our the young parents are actually very good in you know sorting things out, sitting and talking children through. So yeah, oh, that would be great. One more thing, uh, what are the benefits of doing breast reduction uh, procedure for the women besides uh, mental health and everything? Well, the benefits if besides of mental and health, obviously, it's um, to achieve a more, you know, better, no, better body harmony, like a more appropriate uh, size, breast size in, compare, in comparison to the body frame. That's the you know additional advantage or an advantage if for someone who's looking to do it for a pure cosmetic reason. But mostly, mostly those who seek breast reduction, mostly they have some physical uh, pain. Okay, and they usually doesn't do the patient know it's because of their large breasts or they assume that it's because. Uh, body ache, it, I so I have to go to uh, you know someone to just check my back. But they do they have the knowledge that it is because of their breasts. Many many patients that comes through to you. There are many reasons. Um, there are quite a few reasons why someone might have an overly large breast, especially in adolescents. Um, number one, well, it could be genetic, definitely. But number two, it could also be a um, hormonal problem. So that's why it's not just you know seeing and get it done but it's also mm -hmm. seeking advice and also to find out more about the problem okay can we talk a little bit about the recovery process um where is it okay so we we have um several months correct final result it kind of like takes a long period of time does the equipment, oh, sorry, the equipment, but the supportive bra and all that, is this, is a special bra or is it something that already out there for people to purchase? Or is a, it's a special brand that you would like them to, that normally you, you would recommend them to buy? Well, the, the best is, of course, um, a certain kind, a certain type of bra, which is made for post-surgical compression garment. And these are usually quite expensive, but they do have some patented um, bra out there and there are a lot of brands out there. I can't mention names, so I'll be promoting it. <laughs> but um, of course, the best is this, is this kind of bra because they are tailored to, um, and they're customized for these uh, post-surgical procedures. But it does not mean that you only need to get this specific kind of bra. You know, in some cases, a sports bra might be suitable too. Would be but good you want something that, yeah, something that's not, 
and also that can support the breast after the operation. Okay. And um, about the wound healing and after surgical care, if it takes several months, for example, um, moms who breastfeed and then, you know, right after they breastfeed, they're there's a tendency of some women to get big breasts, right? So let's say they do surgery and everything. Um, what is the safe time for them to do the surgery, breast reduction surgery? Okay, you mentioned about breastfeeding. You know, yeah. during the presentation, uh, you need to understand that breast reduction surgery, it means that remove part of the breast tissue and, and you won't get it back, you know? So mm -hmm. it you need to understand that when you undergo this kind of procedure, you will have changes in breastfeeding. And mm. whether or not they can breastfeed or not, it, it is really subjective. But the more tissue that you take out, the less likely, I mean, not less like the less breast tissue that you have. And obviously, when you do the operation, uh, there are some nearby structures that will be the niche, for example, your nerves with your blood vessels. And and as these nerves are important um, as part of the process in breastfeeding, because this nerve, you need this nerve to um, to trigger your brain for breast for breastfeeding, right? So right. the damage of this nerve will uh, alter the breastfeeding uh, in the future so how much does it go but the sub it might not be not not be able to breastfeed at all but there are also some cases where they are you know able to breastfeed after breast reduction and this is something that you need to consider when you are doing uh, this kind of procedure I so, see. So mothers who are breastfeeding must take note of this very, very important. Okay. Doctor, um, the recovery process is long. So assuming that uh, for working women, right, let's say they, they rest, uh, usually how long is the uh, their medical leave after the surgery? Um, it always starts with the, uh, the time of admission until okay. the time of the first follow-up. Okay. So the first follow-up is usually at the two weeks whereby uh, we want to see how the wound heals. And we'll take it from there whether uh, the person needs more leaves or less. Uh, and it really depends on the type of the work, type of the job uh, the person has. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, but in, in general, less than six weeks, no strenuous activities or exercise or no heavy uh, activities because uh, we don't want any complications to happen during yes. this. Right. Um, so the magic number, you know, of the wound healing is always um, this after the six weeks. So, okay. but yeah, this is just you know um, based on standard. Mm. But you need to be you need to understand that different person. Recovers differently. And some, you know, might be earlier. Might some might go to work uh, after two weeks, but right. some might, you know, their recovery is not that um, uh, not that fast, and they might encounter some problems. For example, in the wound healing, mm -hmm. uh, so it might be longer. So, okay. But, yeah. but the final contouring of the breast it takes a few months, mm -hmm. six months, maybe up to a year. Wow. But, but it, in order for it to recover fast, you have to really take care of yourself, not do any activities. Driving, when you know, going on a hump and all that, you have to be very careful. But it's good I say about, it's, when I say about normal, um, no strenuous activities, it's, it's more of um, activities that are using the muscle underneath your breast. Uh, so it doesn't affect when you drive, like you do daily, like when you climb the stairs, when you drive. I mean, you are encouraged to do it, like activities, you are in fact encouraged to walk when the next day after mm. operation. 
to mm. to avoid other kind of associated surgical complications like you know for example blood clot stuff like that mm. like uh, in terms of breast healing uh, breast reduction healing i always say like uh, two to six weeks with light activities and after the six weeks you can go back to normal activities however if your surgeon allows to do so Okay. So, <laughs> like you have to do your follow up accordingly. Yes. Yeah. You have to be very careful then. <laughs> okay, Doctor, a slide. One more interestingly, you can teach us a little bit on uh, how the procedure is uh, done in a, in a very, a little bit detailed manner so you can see how it happens, uh, the tools that you use, uh, something like that. All right. <laughs> well, I would say when it comes to breast reduction, it's about science and the art of plastic surgery. We don't use, you know, very high equipped, you know, fancy tools. We use uh, fine needles, fine uh, threads and sutures, and the rest is really the markings, the art mm. of you know the art of the plastic surgery whereby it's it's um the small adjustment after we have uh, done the basic uh, surgical procedure and this all will affect on how the breast looks like hmm. usually are the patients happy once it's reduced what are the feedback like do they feel uh, healthier do they feel more energetic and like you know like like a stress has left them after the surgery yeah most of the patient not most i think so far uh, all the patients who have undergone breast reduction mm -hmm. uh, because this kind of surgery is not really purely cosmetic surgery so the patient satisfaction uh, is usually uh, very high because mm -hmm. they can, you know, right after the procedure, they can wear appropriate clothes. And, mm -hmm. and some of them even told me that their back pain reduced. So that mm -hmm. maybe, if not reduced, maybe, uh, you know, absent. So this is, I think, to me, it's one of the most one of the most rewarding uh, procedures that I do because of uh, these reasons. Okay, so very nice, very interesting. I want to know if, let's say, if um, I want to, okay, you know, if I want to come and have an appointment with you, and I want to get uh, surgery done for breast reduction, what are the procedure? What must I do? Should I make an appointment first? I have to make an appointment with you, and then what will be the follow up like? All right, the obviously the appointment is the first thing that you need to do with your chosen uh, doctor or surgeon, and uh, usually these are the things that you, you need to take care of before you do your breast reduction. I mean, you can also lose your weight, you know especially if your BMI is more than 26, some might benefit of losing your weight, number one. Number two, of course, you need to stop smoking because uh, this surgery plays a lot with soft tissue and um, you need blood supply uh, to have a good wound healing and post-operative uh, recovery. So smoking, you need to stop at least a month before the surgery. I see. And, yeah. And of course, you need to arrange your, you know, it's better to have support from people around you, uh, discuss mm -hmm. with people who you trust with, uh, and try to get um, support during the, uh, before, during the procedure, which is inside the ward, and also after the procedure. Mm -hmm. Okay, 
So then um, upon admission, so we have to be, BMI really plays a big role in this. It's not just about, okay, I'm going to reduce my breasts. I'm going to make an appointment and go. On. There are things that we have to consider health-wise before we can get ourselves admitted. Yeah, I see. Okay. Oh, yeah. Sorry? Excuse me? I know you mentioned something. Not help me. I, I, I was saying like healthy lifestyle is a, is a no-brainer. I mean, even if mm. you don't do your procedure, I mean, you still need to adhere to healthy lifestyle, right? Okay. The benefits come from How many hours is the procedure, the surgic, surgical procedure? It's about uh, three to four hours, depending on the size. Like in general, it's about like yeah, three hours, including okay. the anesthesia and everything. Okay. Doctor, is there anything else that you would like to share with us? Anything important before we see if there's any more questions from our audience? In, if you want to go for a plastic surgery, definitely. This is what I always say. Um, you have to go to a great doctor. And in Malaysia, there are three criteria of um, uh, appropriate uh, plastic surgeons or a surgeon who can do a breast reduction. They need to be registered under the Malaysian Medical Council, uh, MMC. They need to be NSR, National Specialist Registered. And also, they need to have an uh, LCP in terms of uh, aesthetic accreditation, chapter three. Because this is a very invasive procedure. And of course, they need to be uh, it needs to be done in an accredited, accredited, sorry, <laughs> accredited hospital. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. That that's something that are uh, very important for audience to know. Yeah, before they get, you know choose their plastic surgeon is very very important to know now doctor um before we end our session uh would you like to simply briefly share your uh what when you will be in uh, kpj rawang what time to what time how we can contact you <laughs> so um i am i'm a sessional consultant in kpj kajang special center so they can contact me at this number it's i think it's crawling along the screen right down here yeah yeah <laughs> yeah so just make an appointment i'm available every tuesday evening in kpj kajang specialist hospital okay doctor uh lastly also share with us what other things that you do besides uh breast reduction what other surgery or procedures that you uh, that you specialize in my plastic and reconstruct procedure is a very wide procedure. But uh, my focus is on breast reconstruction, uh, breast enhancement, body contouring, uh, especially in what they call it a mummy makeover and also post bariatric body contouring. And also mm -hmm. in reconstructive body contouring like lymphedema, uh, uh, we call it the elephantiasis, and also uh, lipidema by the treatments for liposuction and also uh, the reconstructive part of the plastic surgery is a lot <laughs> it's actually quite a lot for me to tell but it includes all those lumps and bumps the soft uh, skin and soft tissue tumor cancer facial palsy is also part of plastic surgery scars you know if you, uh, some people might want to revive their scar uh, burns wound and chronic facial trauma, facial laceration. I mean, it's a lot. <laughs> yeah, I think we should have more sessions with you with so many wide range of topics. Yeah, it's so wide range of topics. Yeah, breast augmentation. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> and face face. <laughs> I've been doing a lot. <laughs> There's so many things we can talk about, Doctor. I think uh, we've come to the end of our session and we don't have uh, many questions anymore thank you so much to those who would like to make an appointment with doctor please call the number that is running below in the ribbon and you can make an appointment if you have any inquiry or in related to surgery if you didn't get a chance to ask and you would like to send us a whatsapp to us we can uh, help you check for you you can whatsapp us to 019 333 
Uh, so you can send us uh, your message and we will connect you directly to Dr. Maria Sarah. Thank you so much, doctor, for your time and this informative session. I definitely learned a lot from you today. I hope the audience too. Uh, then I, I think Thank we you. have to have another session with you. Sorry? Thank you so much for having me. Thank, Thank you. you. It's our pleasure. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. Have a great day, everybody. All right. See ya. Bye, Dr. Moya. Bye.